Well, hello and welcome. We are on season four, episode 178. I'm Miss Heard, and you're listening to Miss Heard Song Lyrics Podcast. The Miss Heard Song Lyric is Kiss me beneath the milky toilet. And then the crack lyrics is Kiss me beneath the milky twilight. Milky toilet, milky twilight. Sure, why not, right? Both have white porcelain color you know it works and it sounds pretty close check it out all right so we're talking about six pence none the richer and their song kiss me it's a song that it's from their self-titled third album back in 1997 folks wow it was released as a single on august 12 1998 in the u.s and was issued on an international territories and was issued in international territories the following year so everyone else got to hear it Several music critics compared the song to the works by English alt-rock band The Sundays, and it was nominated for Best Pop Performance by a duo or group with vocals at the 42nd Grammy Awards. And we'll go more about a lot of where they charted and so forth, but I can tell you it was the band's highest charting single in the U.S., peaking at number two in the Billboard Hot 100. So we'll go into that specifically. First of all, let's talk about who's the band. Sixpence and the Richer, also known for some people that call it just Sixpence. They're an American Christian alternative rock band. I didn't know about the Christian part. They formed back in New Braunfels, Texas, and then eventually settled in, of course, Nashville, Tennessee. Makes sense. They're best known for this song, Kiss Me, Breathe Your Name, and their covers of Don't Dream It's Over. I didn't know they did that song. There She Goes. That's a beautiful song. There she goes. There she goes again. And... We get to learn that the name of the band is actually inspired by a passage from the book Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. So that's why they're called Sixpence, None the Richer, or Sixpence. The current members include original member Lee Nash for vocals. She was around from 1992 to 2004, and I guess they must have reunited back in 2007 to present. They have uh, guitarist and celloist Matt Slocum. He was also in the original startup in 1992. To 2004 and then 2007 present and they have a justin carey bass from 1997 to 2004 and then 2008 present and probably their newest current member is rob mitchell drums from 2001 to 2004 and then back on 2012 to present there's many other former members i'll name a few mark Covillion, guitarist he was in that 1992-1993 lineup and everyone else has come and go since then so let's talk about so according to the vocalist lee nash she described the origin of the band's name, like I said earlier, from a C.S. Lewis book, on uh, Late Night with David Letterman. That's, that's how it came. And it came from a book, like I said, from C.S. Lewis called Mere Christianity. I guess it's about when a little boy asks his father if he can get a sixpence, a very small amount of English currency in use at the time, to go and get a gift for his father. The father accepts the gift, and he's really happy with it, but he also realizes that he's not any richer for the transaction. C.S. Lewis was, they say, compared to that, his belief has, to his belief that God has given him and us the gifts that we possess and to serve him the way we should. We should do it humbly, realizing how we got the gifts in the first place. Oh, I love that. So if you have a gift of gab, hey, keep talking, right? So the band received two Grammy Award nominations, like I mentioned earlier. It was first Best Pop Performance by Dior Group with vocals for Kiss Me. And they also had a Grammy Award for Best Rock Gospel Album uh, for Sixpence None the Richer for 1997. So two nominations. Okay, I don't think they won either of them, hey, but they got the nod. So how did they form? We now know that the original bandmates formed this in 1992. So that's roughly, gosh, almost 31 years from now. So 31 years, gosh, time is flying. Guitarist, songwriter Matt Slocum first met vocalist Lee Nash in the early 1990s. They recorded a demo which circulated as the original demos with then bassist TJ Bailing at Verge Music Works recording studio in Dallas and eventually an album. Uh, the album was called The Fatherless and the Widow for an independent label called Rex or REX Music in 1993. And then after adding more members, the band toured in support of The Fearless and the Widow the band released The Beautiful Mess in 1995. This is where they hit mainstream. So in 1997, the group signed to Steve Taylor's label called Squint Entertainment and released a self-titled album, which slowly began garnering attention 
from a wider audience in the mainstream industry. I started to hear about them, like, oh, it's a different sound. Then in 1998, the song we're talking about, Kiss Me, was released as a single, and it just catapulted Sixpence and the Richer, or Sixpence, as some people had to call them, into the national spotlight. The next year, the band followed up Kiss Me with a cover of The Laws. There she goes. Sixpence appeared on The Late Show with David Letterman, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, and numerous morning talk shows. That's how you get famous and more and more because that was way before social media, right? The band had followed up uh, with a follow-up album ready to release, but their label Squint Entertainment started to fall apart, darn it, leaving the band in limbo for several years. Finally, Squint Entertainment folded and that album Divine Discontent was released in October of 2002. That was many years. And then on February 26, 2004, Matt Slocum announced that the group has disbanded. So that's where you'd see that break and then them coming back later on. So let's go back to the song, Kiss Me. It originated as a drop of song written in a Netherlands motel. I love the stories. Lead vocalist Lee Nash said the band had been in their rooms for about an hour when band member Matt Slocum called to let her know that he had composed a new song. Nash went on to say, quote unquote, we were on tour over there and we had a show that night at Flevo Festival, or Flevo Festival. We performed it that night. I went down into his room and learned it. It was an instant hit with the fans, but it was still like a year and a half before recorded. So at least they got to do some workshopping with, with the fans at that time. And hey, they like it. So maybe we need to do more with the song. The song has a more lighthearted, poppier sound compared to the band's prior work. Thus, the band was kind of reluctant, reluctant to include it in their self-titled third album until their producers persuaded them to reconsider like, no, this is a hit. The interesting thing is, I think I mentioned earlier that Nash said earlier drafts of the song had slightly edgier lyrics with S Silver Moon Sparkling, which is like, Silver Moon Sparkling, so kiss me. It was originally written as Cigarette Sparkling, with Cigarette Sparkling, now kiss me. Ooh, I'm not, I don't know you, but I do not like to kiss someone after they've had some cigarettes. All right, okay, or smoke cigarettes. The second did you know is in an interview back with Vogue, a Miss Taylor Swift had said that Kiss Me was the very first song that she learned to play on guitar with when she was 12 years old. So thanks to them, kind of helped her with her guitar playing and learning. So there you go, Sixpence. How did it chart? Well, it debuted on the US Billboard Hot 100 at number 90 on the issue of November 28, 1998, but it fell out of the top 100 the following week. So way up top and then down. Then on February 13th, 1999, so like six months later, it re-entered the listing at number 91, then took another 11 weeks to reach its peak of number two on May 1st, 1999, where it stayed for a single week. That is crazy. It just came back. We, we love that. It stayed at the top 100 for 33 weeks, ending 1999 as the U.S. sixth most successful song of the year. The song also peaked atop the Billboard Mainstream Top 40 and reached number two on the Adult Contemporary and Adult Top 40 chart. So, you know what? They're still making money, it's still selling, and it's still there. So this is amazing. The second time around, it did better. And in Canada, Kiss Me debuted at number 45 on the RPM Top Singles Chart on March 22nd and rose to number one on May 10th becoming Canada's 11th best performing hit of 1999. It topped the RPM Adult Contemporary Chart as well, so it did well with our Canuck friends in Canada. Have you seen the music video? There's actually three, not one, not two, but three. So the original music video was directed by producer Steve Taylor and filmed in Paris, France, because they were trying to play pay tribute to a French filmmaker, a Francois Truffaut, and his film, oh my God, here we go, Jules et Jim, made in black and white and recreating many of the classic scenes from the film. Three music videos were made for the song, with one playing tribute to French romantic drama film Jules and Jim, and two others featuring the band in the park watching a portable television. So, in Jan January of 1999, Miramax used Kiss Me as their main theme song of its team romantic film She's All That, that's with Freddie Prince and so forth. Uh, the film's box office success helped Kiss Me to gain widespread mainstream attention and chart success, and then in Italy, the film was retitled Kiss Me, the song was also included on Dawson Creek, remember Dawson Creek's first soundtrack in April 1999, hence probably why it reemerged in our Billboard Top 100 in 1999. The two alternate versions of the video were also released later, which also featured the band sitting on a park bench performing and watching scenes from either She's All That or Dawson's Creek on a portable television or projected on an outdoor screen. That's smart, so they can just cut in what they want. 
Freddie Prince Jr. and Rachel Lee Cook appeared in She's All That version of the video. And then the Dawson, Dawson Creek version of the video became VH1's number one video for the entire month of May of 1999. So the power of teens watching their shows was big. So I learned a lot. Didn't realize that there were three different videos and why they, it came back in the mainstream being popular in the charts because of probably Dawson Creek and being a theme song to She's All That. I also like that, you know, we found out that it was written in a hotel room in the Netherlands and the band didn't even like want to add it to their self titled debut album and then luckily the studio's like no 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 add it it's gonna it's gonna do well and boy did they do it well and it's just a perfect example of the 90s when I watched it just the other day on YouTube I'm like oh yeah the the look her makeup the feel definitely 90s and what a beautiful song so again it's not kiss me behind the milky toilet it's beneath the milky twilight if you have any additional fun misheard song lyrics like this please send it to any of our Instagram our Facebook page, our Twitter page, or just send me an email, old school, at misheard, that's M-I-S-S-H-E-A-R-D songs at gmail.com. And if we like it, we'll send you a shout out on the on the actual you know episode that we'll be doing and we'll get to, we'll get to talk about more about what your misheard song lyric is and what's behind it. Till then, keep singing those songs wrong. Bye. Woo! -hoo.